Here's the result of applying a dark net neural network to a video file. In this case, a video file that I downloaded from YouTube. Uh, it's a neural network that I've been training to recognize cars and people, bicycles, and motorcycles. And I've been training it with uh, a series of uh, dash cam videos and overhead high, highway cams, uh, some of which I recorded myself, some of the dash cam ones, and some of which are YouTube videos that I downloaded. So that's what the results look like at the end, but let me show you how I got there. So all my neural networks, I have a neural network folder, and then within that folder I have all of my projects. The driving project is the one we'll be looking at today. I've got all of my images split up into different sets. That's how I typically do it. And there's a tool that I wrote. It's open source. And that tool helps, uh, helps you to mark up images which you then use to train the neural network. And the tool itself can actually use the neural network to assist you in marking up images. But I'm going to remove the neural network configuration file and wait file here so that it doesn't have access to it. And I can show you what it looks like when you first bring it up without the neural network. So that's fine. So when you're going through your images, let me find one that doesn't have too much to mark up. There you go. This one is simple. Uh, so you click and drag. It's very simple. If you start to mark up an image, you have to mark up all of the image. You can't leave stuff out. If you do only some of the things in an image, it'll cause problems when it's time to train. So here's a person, it's coming up as a vehicle, so I got to tell it what class to you. So these are my classes here. There's a number for each one. People happens to be number three, so I'm going to remember that. That way, um, do I have other V? Uh, there's some in the background. When I get this other person here, it's going to show up as a vehicle right now because I clicked on the vehicle. If I pr click number three on the keypad, there you go, that changes it. So I will mark these up. These are too small to individually highlight, so I'm just going to grab them as many. And I can't tell if this is a person or a bicycle. I'm going to mark it up as a person. There you go. So you have to mark up hundreds of these images for this to work. And I've got some here. Um, that I've marked up. You can see some of these are dash cams, some of them are overhead highway cams. All right. You right mouse click, select create darknet files. So to train a network, there's a series of darknet configuration files that you have to set up. They're not complicated, uh, but there's a few files and they each reference each other, so it's easy to make a mistake. Much easier to use the Dark Mark tool to do it for you. Uh, then that way you know that all the files are set up correctly. First thing you need to do, however, is pick a configuration file as a template. When you first clone the Darknet repo, it comes with 73 configuration files. Um, not a lot of documentation for some of these and some of them are quite old so first thing off the bat we're gonna get rid of the old ones we're gonna say show us only the new files show us only the YOLO ones and then I typically am only interested in the tiny ones now we're down to seven configuration files YOLO v3 tiny is the one I've used for all of my customer projects uh, YOLO version 4 came out earlier this year but there is not a tiny YOLO version 4 yet. 
and so that's why I'm still on YOLO version 3. The only other thing you'll probably need to change is the max batches. You need to make sure that uh, max batches is set high enough. At a minimum, you have to use 2,000 times the number of classes you have. I typically will start around 10,000 and work my way up from there. When I'm beginning to train a network, I'll start with 10, and then I'll use that network in dark mark to help me mark up even more images, and then eventually increase it up to 20,000, 40,000, so on. When you click OK, it actually generates all of the necessary files, including the script that you need to run to do um, to train the network in Darknet. So it's very, very simple. Uh, in this case, I have a network that I started training this morning, and we can tail the output log file so we can see the training. I'm currently at, looks like just over 8,000 iterations, and it's still going, so I'm not even at the halfway point. But we can use these files, even though it isn't finished, and I can show you what it looks like. So I'm going to select the best one, configuration, names, and this is a name that is generated by the Darknet pro project. It checks at every few iterations and it figures out which one that uh, which one is the best results if I say load now when we go through images images that haven't been marked up yet here's all the proposals here's all the things that the network says hey I found something at this particular location that's an empty one that's boring That's a pretty busy one. So is this one. So you can see it. it's not doing a perfect job yet, uh, but it's only at, what did we say, I think 8,000 iterations, and I haven't marked up enough images yet. I would need to mark up a lot more images. But even with this, it's doing an okay job at assisting me in marking up images. And if I pick one that doesn't have too many things here, Let's pick this one. So I can say, accept all of the things that it found in this image. So if I press the letter A, there you go. Now I can fix up a couple of things. This one, for example, might be a bit too high. This one, it thinks there's a single per, per person there. I can, uh, I can move the borders like this and say, okay, well, here's the first person. And then here's the second one. I would probably also highlight this person over here. And you know what? Let's just redo this one. Here's one person. So in this particular case, it didn't help much. But as the network gets better, it makes it uh, much easier to mark up images. Once you have your network, then you'll want to apply that network to either images or video. And I've got an example of that. So here's where the, the dark help tool, which is a C++ library, also has a command line version. And I can tell it, okay, here's the network I want you to use, and here's the JPEG files that I want you to use, and I just put start on JPEG here for all those Vancouver ones. It'll load the network, and then it'll apply it to every single one of those images. So now I can go through, and I can see how good or how bad of a job that it did. And this doesn't have to be a command line tool. Like I said, it's a C++ library, very easy to embed in your C++ application. And so all of these predictions uh, would end up being in a just a normal C++ standard vector. And it'll tell you exactly where in the image a certain object is located and what the probabilities are for every single class. Uh, in this case, there's only vehicles in this one. Let's see if we can find a, 
more interesting one. This one has a lot of people as well as vehicles. And you can see it in the output here. Some of them, you know, 86% chance that this is a person at this particular location, the width and the height of the object in uh, the image. The same thing can be done with video files instead of images. And that's how I started off this particular vi video is with, with dark help, you can say, here's my neural network, here's a vi video file I want you to work with, and then the output is something like this. So look it up online. Uh, dark mark is how you mark up images. Dark Help is the C++ class that you can use to load up the network in your own application. Uh, Dark Net is the framework which trains the neural network. In the end, what you ship with your application is just the Dark Help portion along with the weights and configuration file for the network.